Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ramblings with an Elderly Teen. Um, I am your host, Sunny, like the weather, and today we are going to be continuing the IB series of my grueling IB experience. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the mental side effects because this is like I think the number one drawback to taking IB is the amount of mental damage you experience throughout your, you know, two years or whatever it is. There's a lot of stress, but there's also so much more than stress. And I just want to talk about it today. Now, as a disclaimer, As with any episode, there has to be a million disclaimers, but I just want to say that this is entirely my experience, okay? And as a little bit of context on me, I manage stress very poorly. I am like a very type A person, I'm very high strung, and I get stressed very, very easily. I'm pretty sensitive, and um... I do put a lot of my self-worth in academics. So if you're anything like me, maybe you might relate to some of these, okay? And if you're not, you probably won't experience any of these things at all, okay? Because I think this was like one of the worst case scenarios. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, if you don't manage stress well, IB is really just going to beat you to a pulp, okay? And if you don't know how to manage that stress, it will only snowball into eventually what becomes an avalanche and then everything just goes haywire. So let's talk about it because I have a whole notes thing written out on all the mental side effects I experienced because of IB. The first one and probably the most obvious one is extreme prolonged stress and along with that i have anxiety and impending doom basically all throughout ib i felt this like sense of doom i was constantly on high alert my body was always like in fight or flight mode i was my heartbeat was elevated all the time I was constantly thinking about things. I just could never relax. And I think because of that, I developed some sort of like anxiety. You know, sometimes I would feel like I couldn't breathe and I was going to have a heart attack in the hallway. Like that's how I felt a lot of the time. And it's just constantly putting out fires left and right. You know, the second you get a deadline over with, another one is coming up because you had to put that one off to work on the first deadline right so you never get a chance to catch your breath i don't know if anybody's ever experienced prolonged stress i hope you never do but to give you an idea of what it feels like it's just like you're constantly being chased and you always have to you know run at a sprint And human beings are not designed to endure prolonged stress, right? We can only be um, in this high alert, you know, sympathetic nervous system activation mode for so long. You know, maybe a couple weeks, right? Not years. I always felt so like belittled almost when people said oh it's just two years of your life like easy you can get ib done with no problem like two years is not to be taken lightly two years is two years of constant never ending stress and deadlines and worry and anxiety and never feeling like you can breathe and take catch your breath right That's what IB was to me. And I experienced like frequent mental breakdowns as a result of this. And I'm not saying this to like 
have a pity party for myself because I'm already, you know, I've pretty much gotten over most of these things. I'm just saying this to give you the reality of what it's like to be in the depths of the IB program because all you hear is IB is difficult, IB is a stressful time, IB is not uh, for the faint of heart is what my IB coordinator always said. That's what you hear, but you never know what that truly looks like, right? So I'm going to try to give you as many descriptions and like quantitative measurements if I can um, as to what it felt like to be stressed and to be anxious and all these things I experienced. So for me, this constant anxiety manifested itself as mental breakdowns and panic attacks and crying. So I would say I cried probably two to three times a week. Now, I don't know if that's normal. Um, Also, I'm a female, so, you know, I'm sure there's some like hormonal stuff going on, but I don't think it's normal for me at least to cry two to three times a week. Like I definitely don't do that now. Um, So crying that frequently was definitely a pretty strong indicator that I was stressed out and overwhelmed. And it wasn't just like a short emotional cry. This was like crying myself to sleep crying, right? Like it was bad. And then I would say probably every two weeks or so, like once every two weeks, I would get like a full blown panic attack. Like it would be hysterical crying. I could not breathe, like hunched over trying to catch my breath, uncontrollable hysteria, that level of crying. And I guess I'll insert a little anecdote here. I remember um, it got really bad, like grade 12. Um, And this is another thing I want to mention, side note. People always told me that grade 11, so your first year of IB, would be the hardest. That is a complete lie. Like grade 12, like your first semester of grade 12 will be the hardest. And sometimes I feel like people just say that to gaslight you into thinking you got the hard part over with and it's just smooth sailing in grade 12. No, absolutely not. Like compounding deadlines, university applications, you're burned out, you're so stressed, you haven't caught your breath in over a year. Like, no, grade 12, it will be the worst year of your life, okay? So I wish I hadn't believed those people who told me grade 11 was the worst year because then I probably would have prepped myself better for grade 12. But anyways, first semester of grade 12, I was really in the trenches going through it. And we were renovating um, the upstairs bathroom, so my bathroom at the time. So I had to be relocated to the basement to brush my teeth and shower and whatnot. I remember it was probably like 1 a.m. I was so stressed out of just like everything. And it just felt like this lump in my chest was like rising, like up and up and up all the way to my throat until it felt like I literally could not breathe and it hurt to swallow. Like it felt like I had a sore throat because there was just such a big lump there. And that was my anxiety. Like, and then after that, I just cried and wept and like I could not catch my breath for like a solid 20 minutes and it was just crying out of pure stress I was crying because I felt like I couldn't do it anymore you know I was so just completely burnt out exhausted and I couldn't imagine myself going through a whole other semester worth of what I was currently going through. And so that was like probably the lowest of all lows was crying alone in the basement and not a single person knew I was crying. Not a single person was there to help me, to comfort me. And I was just completely alone down in the dumps. And that was definitely a low point. You know, I've actually never talked to other people about their 
mental health during IB because I feel like all of us were kind of just closed off and coping on our own. Um, so maybe I could ask other people about their experience, but that was what it was like for me. Along with the anxiety was depression. Um, now I was never like formally diagnosed with anything, but looking back like a hundred percent, I had depression at the time. Um, because genuinely I struggle to remember a happy memory from those two years in IB. Even if I can come up with a happy memory, it's always tainted by something related to IB, right? So during the summer, my parents would try to get me out of the house. They would take me on short vacations, like a road trip somewhere by the lakes or, um, I don't know, go hiking or something. Yeah, there were moments of like, oh, I feel happy right now. Or, oh, I'm like enjoying myself. I am uh, having fun with my family. Or I'm having fun hanging out with my friends. But those moments were so short-lived. And constantly at the back of my mind is this thought like, I should be working right now. I should be doing my IA. I should be working on my EE. I should be doing my summer reading. I should be doing all these things that I'm not doing. And I would just feel immense guilt that I was, quote unquote, wasting my time doing these fun things when I should be working. Um, and I think this is a very much a me problem, but my brain fails to relax until I have no work left to do. And this um, was a good plan back in junior high. I would just finish my homework at, let's say, 8 p.m., and then I would have a couple hours to myself to relax, to do the things I wanted to do. But in IB, the work is never ending, okay? There's always more work to do. There's always something you could be doing. You could be getting ahead on. You could be catching up on all these things. So for me, as like a workaholic, I, my brain could just never shut off and let me relax. So whenever I would be doing something fun or relaxing, I would always be thinking like, I should not be doing this right now. I should be working. Um, like I'm wasting all my time and I'm going to regret this so much later when I have so much more work to do because I'm wasting all this valuable time doing something trivial like going outside. And obviously that's not, a very good mindset to have like it's important to take breaks but for me i just like could not take a mental break even if i was taking a physical break and so that that definitely led me to some dark places because i never really fully enjoyed any moment in those two years and everything was tainted by ib and as a result of that i often like felt hopeless i lost a lot of hope for the future because it felt like this struggle that i was feeling this prolonged strength stress this feeling of never being able to breathe it felt like it was never ending and it felt like forever it's really hard to describe that feeling unless you're in it it's just like an overall lack of hope because you question why you're even doing anything in the first place. I think something that's really stressed in IB, um, like emphasized, is this notion of long-term gratification, right? Like you have to make sacrifices. You have to put the things you really want to do on the back burner for this thing called IB. But in the end, it's all going to be worth it right like play uh work hard now play hard later but for me long-term gratification kind of just became long term like there wasn't really any gratification i was looking forward to at the end of all this um i kind of questioned my end goal like what am i even gaining out of ib and if i am gaining something is it even worth the sacrifice i'm making right now so for me, it was just very hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. 
and I constantly felt like this is my forever now. Like there's no way I can get myself out of this. This is just how my life is, and that put me in a pretty dark place, and it also only exacerbated my procrastination. My anxiety, my existential crisis, which I will go into later. Now, something interesting happened、um, during this time. Is、uh, I don't know if you guys know who Colleen Ballinger is,、um, aka Miranda Sings, but I watched a lot of her vlogs during this time, and she ha- happened to be pregnant with her twins, and. I guess as a little background, Colleen goes through like really difficult pregnancies. She struggles a lot with her mental health during her pregnancies, and I related to her so much during this time because it felt like we were going through similar things mentally, right? Like she felt like she was trapped in her own body. She was trapped in her situation, and the only way out was through, because there's no. There's no person、um, to help you really. Like, only you can help yourself. Other people can be there to support you and encourage you and do all these things. But and at the end of the day, it's up to you to get yourself through the IB program. And in that way, I found many parallels to Colleen's pregnancy. Like, the only way for her to get through the pregnancy is to continue with the pregnancy, right? However, there was one crucial difference: is that Colleen said she's willing to do this for her children because at the end of this long nine, ten months, she's gonna get two beautiful babies, right? But for me, it was different, and that's sort of when I had this like realization that why am I even doing this, right? Because I am not getting something I desperately want at the end of this. At the end of this experience, I don't even know what I'm getting out of it, and I don't even know if I want to be getting anything out of it. Because all the sacrifices I'm making for this program are just compiling into something that's more valuable than anything I could get out of the IB program, and that was my realization, and that's really what sent me spiraling. So. In addition to that, IB really gave me a more pessimistic view on the world and on life in general. And I know a lot of that is like a good thing. You know, it's good to be more aware of the world around you and to have more, I guess, nuanced.、Uh, I don't know. Like a more comprehensive view of the world around you, I guess you could say I'd be really stripped away a lot of my innocence and ignorance,、um, and really sort of exposed me to the more pessimistic side of the world and the evils of humanity and whatnot,、um, both through my personal experience and also through like English literature. But that was, at the end of the day, not helpful.、Um, because why would you want to be learning about Sisyphus when you yourself are in this like dreadful position of despair and unhappiness? <laughs> you know, like you don't want to be learning about a guy pushing up a rock, pushing a rock up a mountain constantly when you are that very person. Pushing up a rock constantly, and you don't know why you're even there. So, in many ways, I wish I be sort of kept some of my ignorance and kept me、uh, more unaware of all these like existential、uh, dilemmas. Because then I think I would have a more optimistic view of the world and of my I be experience. But by learning more about the world, I guess I really lost a lot of hope for my purpose and why we even exist. And having an existential crisis is 
definitely not something you want to be having、um, when you're super stressed and depressed and overwhelmed. Another mental side effect is the loneliness, and this is actually probably like a shocking、uh, side effect to a lot of people because one of the main Marketed benefits of IB is this community that you build and this family that you build, and I guess to some extent, ah,、uh, the favorite IB word to some extent. Yes, like you do build stronger relationships with people. You know, you could say it's comforting to know that the people around you are going through the exact same thing. It's comforting to know that people across the world are going through the exact same thing because the IB is an international program, right? Like people all around the world understand what you're going through. People on Reddit, on subreddits, make funny memes so that you can relate and you can have a good laugh and you get all these inside jokes and whatnot. But for me, that was all like very superficial. Connections, because at the end of the day, you're still suffering, right? Like you're still going through all this stress. And yeah, you could look at a subreddit and read about funny IB memes and look at all these people who are doing their EE the day before it's due, and you could have a good laugh. But how does that make me feel better? You know. Looking at another person struggle in the same way that I am does not make me feel marginally better about myself or about them. So, it's really just like one big pity party sometimes, and that doesn't really help. It often just feels like so a lot of people are feeling the same way I'm feeling. So a lot of people are really miserable, I guess, and. Some people may find comfort in that. I just find a lot of despair in that, and it definitely was not helpful. Overall, I just felt like, sure, people were going through the same experiences at, as me, but nobody really understood what I was feeling, especially because、um, it seemed like the people around me were doing okay. Like it felt like the people around me were. Managing the stress well and sort of doing things on time and not really struggling with procrastination and anxiety, whereas I was like struggling to get out of bed every day. I was struggling to get myself to school and put on a happy face and go to class and do all the things. Like it was really hard for me to even exist, and. I felt like I had nobody to open up to because there's,、um, you know, this like persona you have to upkeep. Like as a part, as an IB student, you have to look put together and you have to seem like you know what you're doing. So if you open up and be vulnerable, it's almost as if you're as you're as if you're like, I'm not good enough to be an IB, and. That was definitely my ego speaking. Like I didn't want to admit that I wasn't as strong as I thought, or that I needed help, or that you know maybe, or I guess like I was also gaslighting myself into thinking maybe I am just overreacting to the stress because it felt like other people weren't as stressed out as I was, which is. Probably not true, and I just didn't talk to people about it. But at the time, it felt like other people weren't as stressed as I was. So maybe I really am just like not cut out for IB, and maybe I am just bad at stress management, and maybe I am too sensitive and incapable of managing all these tasks at once. So there was definitely a lot of loneliness, and on top of that. My parents couldn't really help me, and they didn't really understand because to them it was just two years. Like, how bad can two years be? That's what they always told me. There was never really anyone I could turn to for help, and it was just a lot of struggling on my own. And I also guess, I guess, on top of that, there's a lot of comparison with your peers in IB. 
and that's probably one of the reasons why I never felt comfortable like opening up to the other people in IB. There was just like a lot of comparison. On top of that, I guess another reason is this underlying sense of jealousy almost. Uh, because inevitably there's going to be comparison with your peers. That's just how society works, right? You're graded on a scale that is designed to compare you against your peers. So it's really hard to compare yourself to the people around you. Especially for me, I was working my butt off. This is not to like brag or anything. Like I was truly giving my 110% effort and I was truly doing my best and struggling through it, but I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Like I would put my heart and soul into a paper and then get it back and just be devastated. For a lot of people, seeing the results, seeing the progress is the motivation. And for me too, but I just wasn't getting the progress that I wanted. And so that really killed off a lot of my motivation. And it seemed almost pointless for me to even try because other people seemingly put in less effort than I did, but they were scoring higher than I was. And it was really frustrating for me to even continue trying uh, to improve because it just felt like I would never be good enough or uh, smart enough for the IB program. Another thing I kind of mentioned this before is burnout. And like I said, you never catch a break in IB. You don't get summers, first of all, because you're assigned summer reading. And whoever came up with the idea of summer reading probably also came up with the idea of solitary confinement. Um, like, it, it is not enjoyable. And if you really just want to kick someone when they're down, give them summer reading, okay? Because summer is the light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's the one thing that keeps you going throughout the school year because you're looking forward to like the two months when you can just wake up and not have anything to do. There's no deadline, there's no obligation, there's no assignment, there's no test, there's no essay. You can just sleep in for once and do nothing. And that was what I was really looking forward to uh, throughout my IB years. And that's what I thought, you know, would allow me to sort of rebuild my energy and prep for the next long stretch of IB. But no, okay, I was so wrong because there's this thing called summer reading. And it's not a huge assignment. It's not anything really difficult, but it is cruel, okay? Because the last thing you want to do when it's nice outside, when all of your family is hanging out outside and you're tired, you're burned out, you don't want to work, your brain is shut off, the last thing you want to do is summer reading. And you're not in prime condition like you are during the school year, okay? You're in summer brain mode. Your brain is like functioning at 10% capacity. So it's a very prolonged, treacherous process to complete this summer reading. And you know people are going to procrastinate this, okay? It's inevitably going to stretch out over the entire summer and people are going to be working on it from day one all the way until that Sunday before the first day of school, okay? It's going to ruin your entire summer vacation. And I almost wish they would move the deadline to like two weeks into summer break because I think that would be better. Like if you pressured everybody to get it done in two weeks and just have the rest of their summer vacation to themselves, 
I would prefer that than having the deadline be on the first day of school and having to spend your entire summer when you should be relaxing. And instead, you're thinking about, I should be doing summer reading right now. I should not be going on vacation. I should not be hanging out with friends. I should not be enjoying this nice weather. I should not be having a barbecue. I should not be going to the pool. I should not be taking a road trip. Instead, I should be doing my summer reading annotations. That is not something I want, and that, I think, is just cruel and unusual punishment uh, for youngsters who just need a break. But beyond that, no summers, fine, but also no weekends, okay? I literally did not have a single weekend um, throughout my IB experience. And that's because your weekends are just taken up by either extracurriculars or homework. All my weekends would just be spent catching up on schoolwork, catching up on uh, homework, IAs, EEs, doing research for universities, doing all the things. But on top of that, extracurriculars. And that's another thing about IB, which I really, really dislike, which is the CAS portfolio. And if you don't know what CAS is, it's basically creativity activity service. So it's like a compilation of all your extracurriculars into one portfolio that you have to hand in at the end um, of your grade 12 year. Now the issue with that is it literally consumes all your extracurriculars and Every single aspect of your life becomes IB related. So the one hobby you could have had, the one hobby you could have done for yourself, like swimming, for example, it now has to be tainted by IB as well. Because you can't even enjoy it. The entire time you have to thinking you have to be thinking about how can I record this swim? How can I get my supervisor to sign off on this swim? How can I prove that I learned something from taking these swim lessons so I can put it in my CAS portfolio? Like every single aspect of my life was consumed by IB. And in that sense, it took over every aspect of my brain. I was just constantly thinking about IB and the work I had to do. I guess aside from sleeping hours, I was constantly working. And so I calculated this once, Um, but I would basically wake up at seven every day. I would get ready, go to school, and then I would come home, you know, maybe eat, maybe take a short break. And then I would work usually until midnight or 1 a.m. So if you take that into account, that's over 16 hours let's say, like, subtract some time for transportation, eating, time wasted, whatever. That's over 16 hours of, like, work. And obviously not all of it was work. A lot of it was procrastination. But procrastination, I was still thinking about the work I had to be doing. So literally from week Waking up to going to bed, I'd be thinking about IB and all the stress and all the anxiety and all the deadlines and all the things I had to do but was not doing. And only when I was unconscious could I really like sort of give my brain a break. So all of that is to say you experience a lot of burnout because you just never catch a break. And because of that, you lack a lot of motivation because you simply don't have any more energy to do anything. And when all of the things you do in life are out of obligation for both academics or just, you know, survival, um, it's a really demeaning, really depressing state of being. And it's not really fun. And so Again, it snowballs into this thing where you have burnout, you don't have motivation, but 
you still have to do all these things that are only making the burnout worse, right? Another thing I would say is the immense degradation of my self confidence, and also just imposter syndrome as a whole. Now I don't know if other people even experienced this, because for a lot of people, IB is an ego boost. It adds to your confidence to know that you are in this, you know, advanced program. You're in this program for smarter people, and so you kind of have this title added to your name of you are smart. You are academically excelling. And all these things, right? So a lot of people gain confidence from going into IB, but for me, it just wrecked my self confidence. Again, with the comparison thing, you can't help but look at all the people who are doing better than you. You look at all the people who are managing their time better. You look at all the people who are less stressed. You look at all the people who. Can easily get the grade you want without putting in that as much as effort as you are. You see people who have time to hang out with friends or do things they really like because they already got all their work done, or they're able to shut their brain off and just take a break. Like for me, putting in all my effort towards academics almost felt like a failure. It felt like I wasn't good enough. To come up with great ideas as quickly or memorize information as quickly, so I had to dedicate more time into even being on par with my peers. So I just constantly felt like I wasn't good enough to be in the IB program, and I was just playing catch up by investing more time and more energy into、uh, pretending to be like I was good enough. So in that sense, I lost a lot of my self confidence. And again, like I, I was used to getting good grades in school, because the IB program is designed for people who are at the top of their class, who are performing well in school. So, for me to go from You know, being the top of the class a lot of the time, or being regarded as like the smart one, it was definitely a huge hit to my ego to realize that oh, maybe I wasn't as smart as I thought, or oh, maybe I'm actually really dumb, or oh, maybe I've just been lied to my entire life and I'm actually quite stupid, because how can all these people around me be doing better than me, right? Like when you're constantly surrounded by smart people, yes, it can push you to be better and to work harder, but it also wrecks your confidence. Um, it makes you feel like you're dumb all the time, and that was what how I felt. I constantly felt like I was being outperformed, like I was being surpassed, like I was just chasing my tail in a circle, while everybody was just speeding past me. Right. So in that sense,、um, IB wrecked my confidence. <laughs> Are you seeing the trend here? IB just created like a lot of issues. Okay. Last one because I'm getting tired, and I'm sure you are too. Is time management and procrastination again? IB likes to market itself as a tool that will help you improve your time management because you are given so many long-term deadlines that you are inevitably forced to form good time management habits. And I would. I'm going to attest to the contrary, okay? Because I never had any time management issues until I went into the IB program. I never procrastinated until I went into the IB program. I never did things at the very last minute until the IB program. Do you see the trend? So all of these long-term deadlines just made me develop poor time management. Because technically, you could go like a month without 
really doing any work in IB. And you would feel okay. But then, you know, the deadline comes and you all of a sudden have three things due on the same day and you haven't even begun the research process or you haven't even started, I don't know, you haven't even opened a doc, right? I think a lot of my procrastination came from, yes, long-term deadlines, but also, more importantly, a fear of failure. I be really wrecked my self-confidence. So I was, I became uh, fearful of failing and getting a bad grade. And oftentimes I wouldn't start an assignment because I didn't know how to approach it in a way that would avoid failure. And I didn't want to put so much effort into something that wasn't going to succeed, right? So a lot of um, my struggle with time management came from not knowing where to start and just looking at this massive to-do list and essentially being paralyzed by the amount of work I had to do and how intimidating it felt. As a result, I would avoid the issue. I would not fight, I would flight. So I watched a lot of YouTube during this time. That was like my go-to, what's it called? That was the go-to procrastination activity, watching YouTube. And let me tell you this, okay? The life of a procrastinator is not an enjoyable one. And you might imagine that a procrastinator has a great time. They're doing something that they want to be doing, like watching YouTube or playing video games or whatever it is that they're procrastinating. They're doing like a seemingly fun, enjoyable activity as they're procrastinating. But let me tell you that is not the case, okay? Because the entire time they're doing this seemingly enjoyable thing, they're thinking about all the work they're not doing. They're thinking about how they are procrastinating. They're thinking about the guilt that they feel because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. There is a lot of guilt associated with procrastination that I think most people just tend to brush aside and look over because I guess procrastinators are looked down upon in society as just, oh, you have poor time management and if you just get started earlier, you would have, you know, done this on time. But it's so much more than that. It's really like a mental battle with yourself because no one hates a procrastinator more than themselves, okay? You have no idea how much a procrastinator wants to work, but they physically cannot because they're just paralyzed by guilt, by fear, by burnout, a number of things. Like a procrastinator desperately wants to work and get the work done, but they just can't. And that's how I felt a lot of the time. And because of that, there was sort of this trickle down effect that really affected the other aspects of my life. So because I was procrastinating my IB assignments, I had to push back my university applications. And a lot of my university applications were compromised, I feel like, because I had poor time management. And yeah, I take responsibility for a lot of it. And a lot of it was my fault. Without IB creating all this stress and guilt, I probably could have managed a lot better. And I probably would have gotten into some of the schools I wanted to get into but I didn't because I was so preoccupied with IB. Gosh, I am so tired, but we are almost done. I promise I am just going to go over some of my advice now. So some of my tips and tricks for managing stress in IB. And to be honest, I don't have a lot here because I don't think I fully learned how to manage my stress at all. I kind of just I, I don't know. I sort of just like pushed myself over the edge and just dealt with it. So I guess I'll just give two 
pieces of advice that I think kind of helped me um, not necessarily overcome procrastination or uh, resolve my anxiety or anything, but definitely mediated the issue and uh, I guess made it slightly more tolerable. So the first one is breaking down the task into smaller chunks. So as I said before, a lot of IB assignments are these like mountainous, enormous assignments that are due several years in advance, or sorry, a couple years in the future, into the future. So it's really hard to know where to start and know how to organize this huge chunk of time, right? My advice to you is to start small, like break it into chunks. So if you're writing an essay, for example, you know, maybe you open the document, you put a title on the page, and you come up with a research question, and that's all you have to do for the day. Or, and then the next day, or even the next week, you go back to that doc and you start doing some research. You start doing, um, you start taking a few notes here and there, you start working on your citations page, and then maybe the next week you write your introduction, and then the next week you work on the, your first body paragraph. So if you do it like that, it makes this really intimidating thing seem more manageable and you're really breaking it down and using your time wisely because you have the time to break it down like this, right? So if you just do it in chunks, slowly but surely you'll, you'll see that you sort of had the final product come together. And even if it's not super refined when you first write it, like you can always edit it closer to the deadline, right? As long as you have the bulk of the work spread out um, throughout this deadline period or throughout this assignment period, it'll make the work a lot more manageable. And it's not necessarily something you have to do with essays. It also works with like summer reading. Maybe one day you just read one chapter or you just read 10 pages or I don't know, you just research one article or anything like that. Or if, if you're studying for a for an exam, maybe you just do two chapters today, or you just want to review a certain section or a certain subject, like all of these things. So if you break things down and you really write out a plan for yourself, I would say that's really helpful. And as an addition to that, get yourself a planner or a calendar or some sort of tracker to keep all your things in order, okay? Because there are so many deadlines that are so far into the future, you have to know when those deadlines are. You can't just store them in your brain because you will inevitably forget about them, right? So you don't want deadlines to sneak up on you. You want to be very aware of when things are due and how much time you have left before they are due. So getting a planner, I personally use a paper planner. I know that doesn't work for a lot of people. Uh, I think most people just like to use their calendar on their phone or, you know, on their computer, like Google Calendar or something like that. So just find something that works for you and get organized, like keep track of all the assignments and write out a to-do list of what you have to get done and prioritize the to-do list. Prioritize it based on what works best for you. You know, some people like to do the most difficult tasks first because that's when they have the most energy, that's when they're the most focused, and they can get the most work done. Some people, you know, need a few smaller tasks to get themselves warmed up to get into the zone and then start working on the difficult tasks. So just find something that works for you. And my second piece of advice is learning to take a break. And I wish I took this piece of advice because I definitely did not. And by taking a break, I don't mean procrastinate or go on your phone. 
like truly allow your brain to relax. And if that means going to bed early, go to bed early, okay? You don't have to stay up past midnight working on something or procrastinating. That was a problem I had a lot of the time was staying up past midnight thinking I would do work eventually but never actually getting any work done and I would just sit there and watch YouTube videos. So when it comes to that, like just go to bed because you're not going to get any work done and you're just taking away from your sleep time. So it's better to just go to bed early, you know, maybe wake up early and get some work done in the morning. Or if you don't, sleep in. Get the sleep you need because you're going to be obviously very sleep deprived throughout these two years. So catch up on some sleep, right? Like take care of yourself. Take breaks. Take mental breaks. Go outside. Get some exercise. Don't just turn to another screen as your break, right? So take a moment to like clear your head and I know it's really hard when you're stressed out and you feel like you're obligated to work and you're wasting your time because I was definitely that person. I couldn't let myself take a break but it really does help and I would strongly encourage you to just like go outside and get some fresh air if you can. That's what really helped me or like listening to music or just do something to relieve the stress rather than doing something overstimulating like going on TikTok. Just do something meditative, therapeutic, relaxing, de-stressing so you can just decompress and breathe or sleep or rest. Yeah, okay, I guess that's all I have to say on this topic. Um, I'm definitely very tired and exhausted and my voice is probably strained as you can hear but this was a long one and so next week we are going to be going over the physical side effects of IB. This one will definitely be a lot more vulnerable and I'm actually kind of scared to talk about the physical side effects because they were almost as bad if not worse than the mental. So you can look forward to that next week. And to end off this episode, I will be giving you my song recommendation. And this week's song is called Song to Myself by Picture This. And I think this is um, like an Irish band or something. I'm not entirely sure. But I actually didn't know about this song until recently. But I wish I had known about it back in my IB days because... Again, it's a very sad song. I almost exclusively listen to sad songs. Uh, But this one is definitely more of like a... I wouldn't say upbeat, but it's got a beat. Like, it's more fast-paced. It's a little bit more pop-sounding, but it's still very, very sad. So if you're into that, give it a listen. And I hope I'll see you next week for the next episode. Alright, good night, guys.